What up, players? Warbots tear up in this mud. It's um, it's time for another Warbots tear unboxing, and right now I've got Krell, the Lord of Undeath. Um, no instructions on the back because he's not a plastic model, so I guess they assume that you're just gonna know how to put this together. So let's just take a look at what the screws look like. You got two of them, plus a uh, slot of base. Um, and yep, yeah, he's got a little slot at the bottom of his base, so let's get a close-up <clears throat> look at what comes on the sprue. Okay, at first I was like, fine cast, fine cast, why do you keep crushing my dreams? But then when I looked at the Games Workshop website, the Krell on the 360 rotating table has this exact same hole in his cloak. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I don't know, design, I guess it was designed that way, although I don't, I do not know about this skull on his shoulder plate, if you can see that, look at how flashy and just gross that looks, uh, get out of here, so that looks pretty, pretty gross, and gross in the way that, I don't know if it's supposed to look that way. So I'm, I'm looking back and forth between the uh, Games Workshop product view and this, and uh, look at this, there's this really hideous uh, mold line right down this, you can kind of see it from there a little bit better, down the cloak, some more mold lines down here on this side, um, I can see where some of the tears and holes look like they're supposed to be weathered and that's totally fine but um, a lot of this fine cast is just l looks to me like really really messy and stuff that you're gonna need to clean like look at this flash on the edge of this the edge of the cloak and the flash coming down off the off of his knee, knee armor and stuff <clears throat> also for some reason I know GW is like all skulls all the time, but it looks like the skulls they have on the back of his armor look kind of poorly cast. Which you can't really tell from the product shot because when when th this guy's got his head on with his mohawk, it's actually going to cover up some of this weird detailing of these skulls, but just wanted to point that out. Okay, speaking of the mohawk, here's the other sprue where he's got his helmet with the that crazy Spartan mohawk Roman looking mohawk on it which I totally dig I love and I think it really evokes the uh, ancient age of legends that Krell was supposed to have lived in apparently yeah he was a chaos champion back in the good old days and um, he was actually in the Return of the Lightmaster adventure with Heinrich Kemmler for those of you who haven't seen my review on that role-playing game, uh, Warhammer Fantasy role-playing um, adventure, and there was really nothing on him, like, about the way he looked. He just was this big, bulky, um, white. He had no personality, and um, I don't even know if his his weapon was um, very special in, in that adventure. I just remember, like, I remember the name because Heinrich Kemmler kept him around kind of like as a bodyguard. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I like the design on the axe, I like the design on the the handle, all these like screaming skulls, the bat, the winged skull, I like the, the way that the axe just looks really old and very, very, uh, very cruel and primal, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Considering that he was a chaos champion, I like the uh, homage that the, there are eight points to the little ring in the in the axe head. I think that was a clever way of incorporating the fact that he was a chaos champion in real life. Okay, so three pieces, all in fine cast, so it's got the inevitable flash and um, mold lines and stuff. So I'm going to clean it up to the best of my abilities, glue the sucker together, and show you what he looks like. In the, through the magic of movie making right now. 
Okay, so I built our Krell up and um, I'm gonna let you know what my final thoughts are on him as a model and as a, you know, just as a as a little mini review at the end. So for ease of putting together this model, definitely an A, if not an A+, because the, the head has um, has this knob right under where the neck should be that slots really nicely into into the torso and um, they did this thing with the left arm where it connects to the hand which I haven't seen before in any other fine cast or metal um, model where they actually made instead of like a shallow groove and then a knob on the other part that, can, that slots in kind of like they did for the head and the torso they made a triangle shaped indentation in the arm and then they made a triangle shaped um, uh, uh, peg I guess on in, in, in the forearm so that you really know how to slot it in and where to slot it into and and it um, what that does is it also creates a form that can uh, stick to the super glue. With, when using resin, you should always use super glue instead of plastic glue. Plastic glue is really great for um, all of GW's plastic kits, but when it comes to putting together any fine cast stuff, super glue is going to last a lot longer. I use this Gorilla Glue, and it's really great. <clears throat> you can get it here in the States from any home, home uh, improvement center, from a hobby, craft store. Really, really great. The only thing I have issue with with putting this model together was that if you want to use him with the slotted base he comes with and not make your own entirely new base and chopping off the, the entire uh, tab at the bottom of the figure, you're going to have to do some cleaning and snipping of these uh, fine cast resin pieces that they put in between the foot and the slotted base. So there's like almost like a triangle of resin on, on each foot like I, I think on the right foot it was between the toe and the tab and on the left between the tab and the heel so that's just something that you're gonna have to watch out for also you're gonna have to watch out that um, uh, so putting the model together was fine a, I would give that an A it was really easy to put the model together but cleaning the model I'm not gonna be happy with any fine cast model uh, because even though it's you know how long since fine cast came out there were these really really horrible um, mold lines on the cape. Um, there's really bad flash where the skulls in the back are on the uh, the axe. Just a lot everywhere. So it was really really hard for me to get. And I still see some some pieces that I missed. So I'm going to have to um, go back in with some <clears throat> with some clippers later on and, and and fix those. So I'll give that a C. But you know most fine cast pieces like ease of cleaning and using I, I would say is like a C or a D just because of how bad the flash is and um, I would say uh, options extra options not applicable because there are none there's no extra options for heads which is too bad there's no extra options for um, um, well I guess obviously because it comes with this blade uh, so so I guess that is a uh, non-entity in this grading format, but whew, look at that flash, it's really sticking out to me now that I see it at the bottom of this fur boot. Um, but overall I think that I, I really like this model. The model itself I think is a great design and uh, he looks really big and chunky and beefy and uh, he looks like a, like a Chaos Space Marine almost because he's so hugely bulked out um, but or, or like a Chaos Warrior like, like what he was in real life with that huge super heavy plate. Um, I've heard that the the rules for him aren't that great, so I'm probably not going to use him as Krell. I might use him just as a as a White King, um, or maybe just the leader of the Grave Guard. Put him in as a Grave Guard champion, um, just because I hear his rules aren't that great to justify the points that he has. But this was my review and unboxing for Krell, the Lord of Undeath. I hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next video.